Welcome to Go Figure. My name is Nadeem Makarin, CEO and founder of Gojek, Southeast Asia's first super app. Gojek does ride hailing, food delivery, payments, even on demand massages. You name it, we do it. Go Figure is a podcast dedicated to expose the inner workings of ambitious tech companies in the emerging world. We like to talk about things we like and talk about things we don't like. There are a lot of myths out there that we want to dispel, so keeping it real is kind of our mantra. Hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, hey. W- welcome hey. to Go Figure. Go Figure. Go figure. <laughs> That's right. So thanks for taking your time. Um, My I've, pleasure. I've gone with you guys a long way back now. We have uh, Catherine over here who yep. heads Go Food, mm-hmm. uh, business head of Go Food, and we've been all the way back from McKinsey. Yes. We were in Rocket Internet together. 2004, 2005. It's a long time. Yeah? It is a long time. <laughs> Wow. And uh, with Ika over here, yes. who heads our uh, culture and engagement. Yep. Um, so Ika has all kinds of crazy insights about people who complain to her. Uh, and so the topic of today is really about diversity issues. Um, you know, I think before we wanted to call it um, women in tech, but we kind of discussed right before this podcast, and it seems like why don't we just talk about the gender yeah. uh, issues that are mm-hmm. between men and women in tech and discuss it in a more holistic way yeah. because it's, this is a very, very rich concept. Mm-hmm. And so, like I told you guys, this is a time to be completely open and discuss yeah. things how they are, not what we want it to seem, yeah. right? And that's, I think, an important point about Go Figure about how uh, upfront we are. Yeah. But maybe you want to share a little bit about your background a little bit before. Okay, so Ika here. Background, what people, the biggest question people have about me is what was my background? And people always guess that I'm like a psychology background or something like True. that. And I actually doubled major in computer science and human computer interaction. That's right. right? You so, never, wow. you don't really see that. Yeah. Engineer turned major people. Geek. No way. People. Major geek. So wow. I'm more comfortable <laughs> behind a computer than actually with people. But then when I came back to Indonesia, I couldn't find an engineering job, became when a was banker. This? this was 2002. So a job was basically IT network, and I didn't oh. want to do. It's a shame that Gojek wasn't set up by that time. Exactly. We would have hired you as an engineer. <laughs> right. Now yeah. I'm just so like, the- people who's taking care of the engineers. Right? <laughs> so yeah, and then 10, 15 years later, apparently now I'm programming humans and not machines. So that's actually super fun, because then I try to reverse engineer what actually works in people and organization. And that's actually super fun. Cool. Wow. Mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, put it that you? way. Hi, this is Catherine. So, as Nadim mentioned, started as a management consultant with Nadim in McKinsey. It's like 2004-2005. Then after that, um, live in India for almost two years with a VC firm. Oh. And then after that, mostly in e-commerce and here in Gojek now. Awesome. Yeah. It's great to have you guys. Uh, powerful leaders in Gojek, powerful women leaders in Gojek. But let's talk a little bit about diversity and what it means. Mm -hmm. I think first of all, is it a problem? Is gender diversity a problem? I think it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know, you might have different opinions, but for me, the first and foremost issue that I see is the fact that, you know, based on our data, Gojek has, I think 55 or somewhere between 55 and 60% of our users are women. Yep. Mm And yet, if you look at the ratio of women in our product management team, in our mm-hmm. engineering team, and, and overall mm-hmm. in the organization, it's 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 nowhere near representing yeah. those ratios. It's true. Mm-hmm. Now, mm-hmm. Uh, I'm assuming that that's a problem mm-hmm. uh, because of the the lack of perspective mm-hmm. coming from uh, a woman's side, which I do believe are are different perspectives mm-hmm. that they can bring and add to the table. But I'd like to kick it off with the first question: Is do we have a problem? And what is that problem? Right, Dave. So, you like I to think start? if you're asking if do we have a problem or not, if we're just looking from the numbers perspective, yes, we do have a problem. Yep. Because, like you said, how bad like, are the numbers um, right now? So we look at Gojek and we look at international, right? Right. In terms of Gojek, we're actually doing pretty well. I mean, compared like the Gojek between male and female, it's actually forty to sixty. But then, in terms of management level, it yes. goes down to like thirty percent. 
right? So women are 40%, 40 percent overall? Overall. Okay. So it's actually, actually pretty good. So probably at the entry level, it's quite even actually. Yes. Right? That's right. always a number every time yes. you see this kind of women in workforce. That's entry level is always the same. As things goes up, the women yes. will start drilling yes. down. So that's a clue there. Yes. yes. So as we go higher yes. and people get promoted, oh, the men the, yes. the men ratio yes. becomes significantly bigger. And then this is actually a good question because it's not necessarily in tech industry. It's yes. actually across all industries. That's true. The mm. more you go up in the level, there's just less women. And even in general, we're asking like, hey, what happened to all the women role models? If you look at Indonesia, how many women role models do you really know? I know yeah. a few. Right? Yeah. And then compared to all men, if you look at, you know, Forbes Indonesia list of whatnot, it's like, we don't showcase enough women. We just don't know. And then, and this is actually a daily conversation between me and my friends. It's like, and then we have hypothesis, right? Hypothesis where there's, hey, maybe women just don't want to be showcased enough, one. Mm. Or maybe two, um, when you move up in your career or whatnot, you have more to sacrifice. Yes. Especially when you have families and kids and things like that, right? And three, a lot of women just don't want to play, you know, put, I don't want to say play dirty, but I guess play dirty. Because you have to actually play in a men's game mm. and be comfortable living in a men's world. Yeah. Right? Because when there's the majority of men, you kind of have to like, you know, play in their field. And how many people are comfortable doing that? You know, out of those three reasons you laid out, you know, realistically, it's always a combination, right? Yeah. Of, of all those things. Uh, mm -hmm. But, I, you know, I want to kind of just, to, going back to your point about the percentages, do you notice that as a, is that like a, a a linear or a consistently linear relationship that we have in Gojek. So if we, if it's forty percent overall, then you said thirty percent leadership group. Once you get to the very top, the director is what is that number? Oh, let's do the math. <laughs> like what is it? Are we at ten percent, five percent? No. Yeah. At at heads, right? No, at heads, yeah. yeah. At heads, only like five, five to ten. Yeah. So, so it yeah. progressively yeah. gets worse. Yes. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. I wasn't aware but of that. If you look at it, when I joined, I was the only business lead is female. That's so right. If you look even until today. That's yeah. right. Right? Yeah. And before like you one. joined, Monica was the only one. Yes. yes. I'm like, that's specifically yes. even until the business one. Right. Business yeah. side, on the product side. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we have much more. So there's there's two divisions. There's two biases. One is going up yeah. the ladder. The ratio of women gets smaller. Mm -hmm. Also, there is the also function. a functional yes. yeah. split between functional organizations and product groups. Yeah. It Absolutely. seems that there are there are more women in the functional organizations versus the product group side, yeah. Yeah. which is, and also product engineering, yeah. I would yeah. say no, specifically. So it's Crystal and I know. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's the only two heads. <laughs> yeah. Two out of what, 50s? Yes. Wow. No, less, two out of 30. Yeah. But mm -hmm. That's that's fascinating. So why is that? What's happening there? I think like what, what Ika say, right? I think clearly, um, I mentioned before we started this, right? I used to come from the camp, it's like, okay, let's not victimize ourselves, let's not do a self pity. I mean, like, we just prove ourselves that we are the same as men. But now I think I come to realize it's an, it is, there is a problem. Mm -hmm. And then I think society is one thing, not blaming it, but I think that there's an expectation, right? Because, for example, right, if, if, if women go home at like 10 at night, society <laughs> in Indonesia be like, oh, look at her, she goes home late at so night, late. so late, yes. her family, yeah. it's like bad. Why, why is that? Like, um, when you talk about society, you're talking about culture, right? Culture, oh, yes. you're talking yes. about culture. Culture. Okay. Um, one, because it's just not proper for women to actually Absolutely. go out at night, right? And then if they go out at night, especially if they have a family, oh, you know, this person, you know, values work so much, their family probably don't get enough attention. Yes. There's probably something wrong with the family. This is even like among my, my friends, right? Um, I have uh, this group of like old school friends group, and then we are talking about that. I'm probably one of the, among the seven, eight people that are still like probably single or something like that. Yeah. At this age, and then uh, there will be like comments. I don't think it's meant in a bad way, but they just say, "Yeah, as female, you have to choose." Mm. Yeah. That, that that notion of as a female, you have to choose between career or and family. family. Yes, uh, it's not the same expectation for men, I guess. Yes, which is actually the gender issues is there, and we can actually fight it also for men because, for example, if you choose to be a stay-at-home dad, right? What would society <laughs> feel about that? Mm. Right? In how would your family feel how about would, that? Exactly. How would your family feel about that? They're like, oh, men, you know, stay at home. Like, no, no, no. I, I think that, you know, e even for, for guys, that, that assumption of expectation on you can also play a negative role. Like, for, for example, 
you know, ever since I, I had kids mm-hmm. about a year and a half ago, and I have two kids and they're babies, you know, I made a commitment to see them every day, which right. means I have to either see them in the morning or I see them before they go to bed at seven. Yeah. So inevitably, what I had to do mm-hmm. in order to meet that commitment is to actually shrink my time in the office, yes. right? And you won't imagine how much guilt I had to deal with yes. in, in, in having to deal with that because for, you know, in many ways for a woman that would probably be more okay, yep. mm-hmm. but I still feel that as a guy, we also do not, those expectations do not allow us to do that guilt-free mm-hmm. because of the expectation that you still need to, moreover being a CEO, right? Mm-hmm. But that also has to come to play, but because because I'm a guy, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like that that is also kind of building that sense of guilt uh, of, of leaving, especially when other people are still in the office, just to be able to say goodnight to my kids, even though I still work at night yeah. afterwards. But I think that's an interesting play that those expectations don't only affect women, but they also affect I'm men sure. I'm sure. as well who want to decide to 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 balance their yes. roles. Mm-hmm. So and really I realize hard. gender is always two ways, right? We can talk about men being mansplaining, but you know, we know men also have stories of women who's oh, absolutely use their power in a very negative way. Let's right? talk. Let's talk about mansplaining a little mm-hmm. bit. What What do we mean by mansplaining? Because I keep hearing these topics about about uh, mansplaining. I mean, I know the definition of mansplaining, but I'm saying, what have you seen from 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 the uh, at least from your function in in culture? and people coming up to you all the time mm-hmm. with complaints. You know, what I get all the time is this concept of a few w- women leaders and a few women managers. They, they seem to find a lot of difficulty influencing a male counterpart to do something that they need them to do. And it usually, the, the answer, the, 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 the refusal to do so is done through this concept of mansplaining mm-hmm. or patronizing mm-hmm. voice saying, look, mm-hmm. you don't understand how this is done, etc. So can, can we talk about cases of mansplaining and why this is, seems to be such a big issue? I don't know. Uh, it's not only that, right? I, the, way, the one that I see mansplaining a lot is, um, for example, like this. This mm-hmm. is a perfect kind of thing, right? There's one more guy is there, okay? Mm-hmm. And then Ika says something, mm-hmm. and then um, nothing happened. And then if you are the one who is planning, suddenly repeating the exact so same thing, the exact mm-hmm. and then suddenly thing. that guy says, like, yeah, that's a good point. Even though it's saying the same exact, exact same, same thing. thing. So it's it a d- paraphrasing. <laughs> so it doesn't necessarily have to be a patronizing voice. No. It could no, be no, simply no, no, no. not reacting or not yeah. acknowledging the yeah. comment of a of Do you a agree with that, guys? Yes, agree. And that's why for me, mm. I personally never actually experienced it firsthand because, yeah, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But then I understand a bunch of people feel it so it's hard for me to empathize because I'm not in the room when that happens right and I don't know if they're just not being clear or is it gender thing like I don't know I don't want to assume but that's the part right I think we take for granted sometimes female as well sometimes female are harder on other female Mm -hmm. I think everyone is given Mm -hmm. and 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 sometimes we take for granted I mean especially because we feel that we work hard to get where we are Mm -hmm. and then we feel that then you have to do it as well Mm -hmm. I mean like but not everyone are can stand up for the lack of better words, can stand yeah, up for themselves, for themselves like that, right? So we have to empathize in that yeah. sense that we yeah. as well. But that's the alarming part. The complaints that sometimes I hear are coming from higher level women leaders mm-hmm. in the organization sometimes where, where these things exactly, they just don't yep. get acknowledged, they're common in the middle of the problem. So what do you think is happening on the lower levels, right? Oh, if yeah. we're talking yeah. about women yeah. of high power and influence facing this issue, yes. do you expect that issue to be worse Further down, absolutely. absolutely. Okay, okay, absolutely. And let's not let's not talk in a black box, yeah. Yeah. right? Let's talk. We're here to talk about overall performance yeah. of the organization because mm-hmm. we have to have an anchor yes. of yeah. this. So, how does this disparity actually affect the performance of the overall company? Let me share this one statistic, Rad. I think you you're aware of this as well. Uh, I always like to use this, but sometimes I like it when the guy is quoting this more because if I am a female quoting this statistic, it seems like I just want to prove proof, mm-hmm. uh, ourselves. Right. So there is a study studies being done when there are two or more, the keyword is two or more, female in the board of director is statistic, statistically significant, the performance of board is better. True. 
the performance of board of or company? The company, the company, the company is, is better. better. It's yeah. better in okay. the in the board level. Yeah, because they're thinking about the more like higher level kind of higher level kind right. of. Uh, I've heard position. I've heard yeah. several. You of heard these something kind of like that, right? Yeah. And yeah. that one is this is where I'm every time I'm being invited to talk about women. I always start with this because basically what I want to clarify is I am not talking on behalf of women. I'm talking on behalf of diversity, mm. because if you double click why the performance is better mm-hmm. when there's two or more female, it's because female bring a different angle or approach in approaching the same issues. So it's more the richness of the solution. So what I'm saying is it's not just gender here that we're talking about. It's also social economic background, it's also religion, it's also race, it's also so age it's and stuff. Diversity across exactly. multiple dimensions. Yes. Exactly. But gender is one of us that's often being highlighted as well because that's one of the biggest issue of having that diversity and in that high visible. level. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As it's, it's most visible, right? It's yeah. that, that yeah. 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 So Tying that back into to the whole performance question, then, what? Let's go one level down and discuss the root cause. What makes having a more? Uh, it's two things, right? There's equal numbers, mm-hmm. and there's also equal influence mm-hmm. per 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 level group, whatever it is, to make it gender agnostic to your influence, right? What does increasing? Let's talk about women, and we can go a little bit wider in terms mm-hmm. of different types okay, of uh, sure, yeah. diversity. But let's talk about women mm-hmm. per se. It's a gender diversity. What, what makes increasing the voice of women in an organization like Gojek, for example, improve its performance? Like, can you share specific, because if we can't define yeah. the mechanism by which this happens, we'll just be shooting in the dark. Mm-hmm. And then it just becomes a moral or ethical yep. discussion. Yep. But that's not what we're here today to talk yeah. about. We're talking yep. about performance yeah. of the company, yeah. yep. right? A very simple, good example, right? Yeah. I mean, like when, when we do this, like for example, customer research for mm-hmm. GoFood, I didn't realize that we have quite a big uh, chunk of customer is basically working mom. Okay. They are working mom, they send go food during lunchtime to their kids at home because the kids go home from school and she feels guilty she's not at home, she's sending a nice food to their kids. Sure. There's a quite a big chunk of our customer segmentation, for example. Mm. By us having female like a working female in our product team or even like promo designing team or something mm-hmm. like that, you think of that. Right. Because there's a real the customer there. Mm-hmm. Right. So do they look at it that way, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, 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 ex- yeah. I'll, I'll extend that topic yes. uh, just, just a little bit. We had a previous podcast here where we, where we talked with, with Dito and Hans about the impact of what happens when you bring engineers, uh, some of our engineers, like say from India, yeah, over to Jakarta, yeah. and their firsthand experience using the product fundamentally alters the way they think about Absolutely. their product. Yeah. Now, you, if, if that works in that closed anecdote, as that, yeah. as that, if, 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 if that is true, that your experience dictates yes. your ability to empathize with the yes. user in a more powerful yes. way, then by default, having more people who are more reflective of your customer uh, base mm-hmm. um, will have will increase the level of empathy and therefore increase the level of decision making that is closer to the user's needs, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And represents the diversity of those mm-hmm. user yes. needs yep. instead of a m- monolithic view yes. over who the user is. Yep. And from the upward feedback data, it's fascinating to see that a lot of people who have female leaders and comparing them with the anecdotes that they say when they have male leaders, uh-huh. um, the biggest criticism about people having a male leaders is like, yeah, you know how my bosses are, right? They're extremely reactive. So there's a, there's this perception. Really? There's this perception, and it doesn't matter. It's like coming from male or female. Uh, the way they the way they they actually phrase it is like if you have a male boss, they tend to be more reactive. But if you have a female leader, it's less reactive. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Um, I don't know what why. What do things <laughs> going on? <laughs> but then more but more reactive means what? More 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 uh, changing, more indecisive or more um, changing not direction? Ju- um, I think changing directions has happened all over Gojek, right? <laughs> this is more like if there's trouble, <laughs> if there's trouble or an incident, you know, yeah. a male leader would just like, oh, yes. this, 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 without actually really thinking of the what the consequences are. Mm. Whereas a female leader would be like, oh, wait, let me see, wait, mm, let yes. me think about it. the consequences going to be A, B, C, D, okay, let's actually problem. So it's like slower in terms of problem And just to solving. be clear, this is feedback from both male For and both female, male and that female. Is, subordinates Sub- yep. wow. that have noticed this yep. difference. Yeah. That's really interesting. So that is really interesting. And that's yes. across the board? That's across the board. Wow. Yeah. I didn't, haven't seen that one, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, to be, to be honest, I think 
part of what I love about Gojek's radical yeah. candor uh, culture is the ability to openly acknowledge the differences between men and women, which is something that's yes. actually yes. quite not, not quite yes. nice in Gojek, yes. where we yes. can actually share differences um, about okay, what generally are the styles that are yeah. different or the preferences that are different in an open way mm -hmm. that may not in other cultures or in maybe other countries or other companies we might not be able to talk sure. about yeah. it, right? Sure. And so I I do not think that we can get to the crux of this uh, gender gap issue um, without acknowledging the key differences of style, of, of uh, preference, of, mm. of natural inclination, mm -hmm. the, the level of aggression, the level of consensus building. These are all different variables that may change slightly yes. mm -hmm. in general. Yes. Of course, it's not on an individual basis. This is just in aggregates, right? Mm -hmm. On an individual basis, you can get just as aggressive mm -hmm. uh, female leaders, Absolutely. if not more, than, than male leaders. Yeah. So we're not stereotyping. But there are differences that if we don't talk about, then we can't get to the root cause of the yes. problem and say it. Let's start from the beginning. Let's start from recruitment, mm -hmm. right? We've made a concerted effort to actually recruit more women, women despite yeah. the... Wait, the, wait, wait. The, especially, the, especially in engineering. I, I yeah. as a female, have a problem with that. With what? With, with like, Hiring consciously say, oh, we have to hire more women. Right. This is I a controversial a point. Yes. Yes. No, I, 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 don't I acknowledge it. It's not it. just about the I numbers, never like right? that. I mean, yes. like, this is coming back to my point, right. right? I mean, like, we are here talking about gender issue, not asking for dispensation. Right. Full yeah. stop, right? That's different. Yeah. Uh, what we are talking about here, if there is an equality or, like, different preferential treatment. Right. But it's not... If by by if you are hiring intentionally more women, I think that's one is wrong as well because the preferential treatment towards women. Mm. Yeah. That's not what we are going. I like what we are doing with the blind resume. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you? What so you, you, hide you hide the gender. Right. So you don't yes. know. Yeah. Right. I, I think that that's the right way to do it. So you really hire you're based on the merit. Yeah. You're eliminating the inherent bias yes. of that Absolutely. selection process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's the way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's uh, interesting. It's like the voice. I didn't know that really we know. started doing that. Did we start doing that? I think um, we, start on we started few doing functions. that for yes. few functions, yes, mm -hmm. agree. But not, yeah. Not all yet. Not all yet. I would love to see the data yes. of what comes out. I know, Did right? The ratio shift. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But so. then then we okay, this is kinda like a sidetrack. Then we start guessing because the way you write your <laughs> resume can kinda tell whether you're a guy or a girl. Sure, sure. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But that's better. I, I think that's the right I mean for me by blinding it is the yeah. right attitude. Mm. Uh, the yeah. right way to approach the issue, yeah. right? Instead of creating like uh, quotas or yeah. additional no, effort. I don't yeah. believe in quotas. Yeah. And, and why does that bug you? As, a, as women, why does that bug you that? Because for me, we are looking for a best performer is regardless of the gender. That, that's, right. the, that's the fundamental thing. But, but here's, where, here's where the logic, I think, may be somewhat flawed, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I, I understand the argument about um, creating a, ver a purely gender agnostic performance-based recruitment process. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, getting the best individual leaders do not correspond naturally to the best performance of the company. True. If you believe mm -hmm. that actually mm -hmm. getting the voice or the perspective of women, which, uh, which, which represents the largest part of our consumer base, 60% yep. or yep. so, if you believe that, then that ratio alone will have positive impact to the overall I sense don't, of the I government. don't feel like it's a ratio per se in terms of the total organization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel yeah. like it's like a project based, right? Because whatever project you problem you want to solve, then the task force of the diversity of the task force that you put into that project should be diverse enough. Okay. Right? I mean we can actually say that our whole company is diverse, but then we're still not you know, using the diversity in the most powerful way, mm. right? So if you want to, if you want to solve basically, you know, how can we serve the women out there better through our app yep. or whatnot, then create a task force. We have a good representation of women and diversity, and we can actually organize it that way. Because because if we do say we have sixty percent women and forty percent male. Do we still fix a problem that we're facing in an organization? Yeah. Not necessarily. There's only one thing, right? I'm talking mm. about like coming by to the mind, explaining this kind of like on a day-to-day -day operation of staff. Mm -hmm. right. And then that's also part of the gender thing. Yeah. What, what do you mean? Uh, I mean like the hiring just because, like what Ika say, just because we have like the ratio doesn't solve the real issue of gender. Right. Yeah. We could be, we could be just treating the symptom. Correct. Without it. Correct. Okay. 
So let's talk a little bit about what it's like for you guys to be a woman leader. I mean, you're, you're very. <laughs> I have a bad answer. For this. <laughs> no, good or bad. There, there are no good or bad answers, right? There's just the truth, right? So I'd, I'd love to hear what it's like. Challenges? Is it an advantage? Is it a disadvantage? Is it hard? Is it easy? Like, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very curious to know from your personal as well as what you've heard from others yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, around you. Yeah. Um, from my side, I think because the way I was brought up and because I pretty much hang out with a lot of, you know, men, male, male <laughs> in my life, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, it, it doesn't feel like a problem, right? Mm -hmm. For me, I don't differentiate being a leader as a male or a woman mm -hmm. or where I am, right? And maybe it's because whatever people say or perceive me or whatnot, I don't take things personally. So for me, for me personally, it's not an issue. Right, but then it be it becomes more of an issue for me when it's when I start having child, mm. because then but then I realize it's also not a gender issue. It's more me as a mom. a mom and how I see myself as a professional. Because before it's like oh I can give 120, 150 percent effort. I can work like 12 hour days, and I was like I don't want to work 12 hour days. <laughs> anymore mm. right but then everyone surrounding me it's like giving like 100 percent like i feel like i'm such a non-performer now like so the conflict is there in terms of leadership right but it's i don't i don't attach it as a gender thing because like you said yeah, right because you, you, I, because you same thing but right. it is but it is right because you so what's curious about your case it seems that you've only become conscious exactly. of your gender case when you had a kid exactly. and then suddenly oh now i'm a woman yeah. and i'm realizing the yeah. the constraints and yes. limits yeah. so what was that change like from i mean you recently had a kid what six months ago uh, yeah seven months ago, seven months ago yeah. and it was major conflict um it was up to the point that last year i was telling monica i was like maybe i should just be a stay-at-home mom like i don't know how to handle like <laughs> work and baby at the same time like i really don't know how to do it right because it's a first for me like I never had that role where I'm yeah, like actually yeah. becoming you know this mother right and then I think part of women and I think this is the biggest challenge for all women we like things to be perfect right and I think the biggest thing that I learned throughout my journey mm -hmm. I'm not just a woman but to let go of perfectionism yes Right, mm -hmm. and then and then especially being a first time mom, it's just like okay, I want to be best at both roles. I want to be best at work. I want to be do good at work. I want to do good at home. So you just don't sleep, right? Exactly. That's a, <laughs> that's that's a, a solution. And then that's and that's a like, very that bad. Sleep. <laughs> that's a very unsustainable solution. Be the best at everything. I know. And then no. you realize like okay, that's bad, right? And like you said, right? Even at okay, our kid, it's just like you need to sacrifice something. You know, like okay, what am I sacrificing this year? That's right. right. So, yeah. so just so that for the listeners that don't know, um, yep. one of our top strategic themes for next year is be the best at what matters. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the key requirement is for all the leaders to actually uh, transparently shout out what they are going to sacrifice, sacrifice yes. mm -hmm. in order to be the best at X, right? And, and so this is actually a perfect example of once you have a kid, and I've only realized this after having a kid, even though I'm not the primary caretaker mm -hmm. of my children, I'm also a caretaker. I might, I might be the secondary mm -hmm. caretaker, but I, 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 I can echo that, that feeling of what you have to trade off. And yeah. to me, that you simply cannot be the best at both. Yeah. You have to choose, yeah. right? You have to choose. Exactly. Yeah. So, and that's a big conflict because I've never actually had to choose before. Yeah. Right? On the kid, uh, on having a kid um, point, do you, how big of a role do you think having a child or expected to have, more like expected to have a child in the next two, three years can have on your ability to get recruited or rejected yep. from, a, from, from tech and other companies to date? How, how big of that in reality is it? I know people will never admit that, but is that how, how big of a factor do you think that is? I mean, you've been involved in all kinds of recruitment. Uh, uh, you, you've I talked to all stories. of our headhunters. Yeah. You've talked to a lot of these. So, what, what's yeah. your perspective there? I hear the stories. Um, I think for the lower level, it doesn't make much of a mm -hmm. difference. Mm -hmm. But the more you move up, then because there's more expectation given on your responsibility, mm -hmm. then it becomes harder. Right. Right. Uh, because, for example, if you are head of whatever, like Go Food, right, and suddenly you want to take a role 
you know, take a role as a mother and have, you know, triplets, <laughs> right? And suddenly it's like, oh, I and then the peers, imagine. and the peers would be like, it's not you. It's actually okay. the peers like, oh, I don't think she can handle this, mm. right? And there's that judgment from the peers. And then actually they start giving her job to other people. And I think the biggest problem is not, not how to solve it, but the biggest problem because instead of telling you that, yeah. hey, we need to manage this, what, what, they start giving your job yes. to someone else. And I think that's the biggest problem out there. Without engaging that person. Yeah. Alone. Yeah. So when she comes back and she's like, oh, I have a smaller role now. You know what's going on? Do, do people not trust me anymore? So actually, a lot of people are not comfortable in this wow. crucial conversations. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's and true. I think the key is crucial conversations. And, and the thing is, it's also the thing is this, right? People are not comfortable addressing it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that, like what Ika say, it become like, a, designed like that suddenly this person come back and there's not much left there mm -hmm. because people are not comfortable saying hey can you handle this yes yeah. right yeah. and bringing it up yes yeah. and that source of discomfort comes from the fact that this gender diversity thing yes. is kind of a Correct. catchy subject Correct. and people don't want to feel offended exactly. when in reality you have to call it what it is yeah. Yeah. suddenly the burden of this person's uh life yes professional personal it's all one yeah. pie right yeah yeah that's <laughs> yeah. so a lot of people just can't can't seem to figure that out this is all one one whole human Absolutely. being and so um, that that's really interesting what you said so the, the level of discomfort is actually preventing having can be honest yes exactly honest conversations yes. about how we're gonna address make this it, work. Address, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah because the spectrum if you talk about gender right actually the spectrum is huge we are talking here and I have to note here that Gojek, I mean, with all my experience, we are very lucky in that sense. It's almost negligible what I see and encounter here mm -hmm. compared to what it can be out there. Yeah. So if you feel it here... What's it like out there? Just amplify it like... So, so I told I, yeah. I share with you both just now, right? I have this, it's really like only three, four years ago. So it's like not long time. This is not like 20, 30, 40 years ago we're talking about. And then there is this uh, group, a chat group, Basically, that uh, the, the the CXO level of all the e-commerce company or like tech company are like part of mm -hmm. for them to discuss about like can be a regulation, can be this, can be that, and all these kind of things. It becomes like a thought process, kind mm -hmm. of thought, thought partner in that group. Mm -hmm. So when I become the CEO, I say like, hey guys, I know about this group, and I say, can I join? Mm -hmm. And they basically tell me like flat out no. I still remember the answer. They said like, wow, this is a uh, harder discussion than the, remember last time during discussion mm. is like mm. harder than that cat i say why I, and i didn't realize because mm. i come from a from a background that people don't really tell the different shit on that mm. i say why why can i join they say like oh guys want to talk about guy stuff someone else told you that this is the reason why no i the admin that, told the, me the, that the admin mm. told you yeah. <laughs> Uh, wow. And flat out, and then after that, some guys as my friend tell me the conversation happening within the group mm -hmm. about me mm -hmm. wanting to get in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but this makes me curious, though. If we see it from a male perspective, right? Um, how does it feel like for you guys? Because I see a lot of people actually say, yes. right? Hey, you know, men are actually intimidated by strong women. That's why they don't want to. Ask Nadim. Right? Do you feel that? But I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Nadim doesn't get intimidated by anyone. <laughs> That's true. It's a wrong sample. And I think I think the reason why I don't get intimidating by strong women is because I grew up around exactly. very, strong. very intimidating yeah. strong women. <laughs> Um, so both my sisters, I have two yes. older sisters who are all like alphas yes. and my mom is like yeah. supreme alpha. So you know, all the strong personalities like in my mom. family have been, I've been, I was raised around women, uh, very strong women. Yeah. So I have a How very How do you think that changed your, change you as a person or shape The you? way it shaped me, I think seeing such strong women have wield massive influence everywhere means that to me, I am potentially less sensitive to things that are going on mm. around mm. me that may may disadvantage women, right? Mm. I think it could become a blind spot because it's kind of like, same like me going to uh, international school yeah. background yeah. as a kid growing up. So for me, I don't see yes. race. Mm. I just see different ethnicities. I don't I don't see racial issues yeah. that in yeah. some other cultures would be harder. Yeah. So it's the same with me with gender. Because you think every woman can stand up for themselves. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so the 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 uh, there's people like me and there's people on the opposite side of the yeah. spectrum mm -hmm. who don't see that many that's strong 
yeah. moments and they have a similar bias but on the other side yeah. uh, they see every time probably a woman is very strong or dominant that they get intimidated yeah. Yeah. so that could also be a function yeah. of their upbringing but I think that the, the, the important point whichever part of the spectrum you were raised at having the sense of safety of being able to talk about these issues openly a in a culture yeah. is the key. That's the yeah. key. And not get yeah. jumped on yes. by yeah. people yeah. or by, you know, uh, yeah. people in face to face or people on social media, etc. Yeah. Yeah. We become a very, very uh, sensitive mm-hmm. culture per- mm-hmm. and, and, and that's been exponentially increased uh, through social media. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's actually making us further away from the solution when the solution you know, uh, things with gender diversity, things with to do with even harassment in, yeah. in, in the office, which happens in every single office and needs yeah. to be addressed. It, it, it needs, the, the, the solutions to this problem require both ends of the gender spectrum. Oh, absolutely. It requires yeah. guys yes. as much as girls oh my to God. have that It's discussion. more powerful. Yes. And, yeah, and then even, we can't, like women with women, whatever, women equality, women yes. empowerment, yes. it cannot happen without, you know, yes. the male being sponsored. Absolutely. And, and, and our voice is being heard, right? Yes. Uh, but Because but it goes two ways too, right? But I think you bring up a very good thing, right? I think coming back to the issue, we, we started this session talking about, yes, there is a gender hmm. issue, right? But then if you say, okay, what are the solution to it, mm-hmm. right? I think you touched it just now. The, the being open about it, yeah. to be able to talk and be comfortable to say, hey, you just mansplaining me just yes. now. Right. Right? Yeah. I think that is still... Call it out. Correct. Call it right? out. The correct. ability to call it this, out. This, I think it's the And call it out way. in a respectful way, yes. which means face-to-face. Yes. yes. Don't call it out in a in different program. WhatsApp group. <laughs> yes. yes. Or on Instagram. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The problem with the social media, which, you can which hide. Happens. That's right. that, that, yeah. that stuff happens. happens all the time. Suddenly you like, post an Insta I story guess. like yeah. talking yeah. about something like, oh, what are you talking about? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's and a shaming yes. in, in some ways, especially as we get younger yeah. Uh, yeah. on the generations. Yeah. It becomes and more of a shaming culture yes. as opposed to, yo, yeah. just have the courage to, to talk to that person up front. Yeah. And I know it's it's harder than it's that. Hard. For some people in a position so of power, hard. it's harder. It's harder. Right? And that's why I said I the, having a male part as the sponsor could help. So for example, if if we're in a conversation and you're mansplaining to her, <laughs> right? If another woman, it's not her, a woman or a male is like, Dim, you're just like mansplaining to her. Mm. It's yeah. much more powerful than actually she's calling you out. Right. right. So it takes a community to actually shift this gender mindset because yep. it's not about you versus her, hers, whatnot. It's a, how are we as a community supporting each other on this journey? And it right. takes both sides. The female yeah. has to be able to stand up to say, "Hey, you yes. just did that." Right. And then for men to be like sensitive enough and to be able to like yeah. listen as well, exactly. because a lot of I, I I honestly sometimes feel that the guys didn't realize what they are doing. Yes. Oh yeah, I think that's a major. So I want to talk <laughs> about that. Yes. Yes. I want to talk about this issue because. I feel like right now, if we took Gojek as a spectrum, yes. I think comparatively to the region and where we we do mm-hmm. have a very patriarchal society in yep. Southeast Asia, no yep. matter which which culture which, in Southeast yeah. Asia, it's very yep. patriarchal, much more mm-hmm. so than the Western. Gojek is, I think, at the very far, uh, yeah. m- more 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 diverse yeah. and more open side of that spectrum, a more positive yep. versus relative to other companies mm-hmm. in this region. Having said that, we're also in the middle whereby you have, say, companies in the U.S. Mm-hmm. that have taken this concept much, much further, mm-hmm. but has also, from what I've heard and what I've observed, has created a sense of great discomfort in the yes. conversation yes. because of the inability or, or the shaming yes. culture or the inability to say something or people get offended constantly. Mm-hmm. Just so I, I kind of like where Gojek sits here. but. What I do hear about a lot are things like what you just mentioned, yes. Kat, mm-hmm. where it's not an explicit thing. It's not about, a, yes, I'm sure as, uh, cases of harassment happen here yeah. and there, and that's just black and white, right? Mm-hmm. Any type of harassment, whichever gender, just out, mm-hmm. out right? That's, that should not be a gray area there. <laughs> but uh, the, the more acute issues are these dismissiveness. Yes. Mm-hmm. The sense of Absolutely. dismissing or not acknowledging in, in the discussion group in WhatsApp groups, yeah. wherever you have communication in larger groups, there is a consistent feeling of, I'm just gonna ignore her comment. Correct. And then respond Correct. to it when another guy mm-hmm. says it. Why does this happen? And why do you feel that the guys are not, the males are not conscious of it? Let me start with saying that the world has progressed. We have to admit, the world has progressed, but every progress is not 100% there yet, right? right. I think this is, a hundreds of years 
kind of issue, right? A female used to have no voice, mm. and then some guys, um, for the lack of better word, are less evolved than the other, mm. and it's the. <laughs> 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 just it's evolution. Yeah. Just blame evolution. <laughs> <laughs> we have our Neanderthals <laughs> in the organization for the guys who are listening. <laughs> Grow up, <laughs> evolve. You know, you, you, know, <laughs> you are not evolved. But you know what I mean on that, yeah, right? Yeah, I, I, I totally and, get. And it. I'm, I'm going to say like it's sometimes it's not really that guy's fault because they grew they up. Everyone's yes. grew up in a totally different environment. Yeah. They grew up probably the mom is not very uh, the more the more passive one or something mm-hmm. like that. Right. So, ev- but that I think what's great. Thank you for for coming up with this this topic of podcast, right? Mm. We have to call it out. Right. Mm-hmm. So I'm sorry to say if you are the less evolved one, you have more catching up to do. Mm. <laughs> so we're gonna start calling it out. Sorry, you're just less evolved. <laughs> Someone didn't get the evolution memo. <laughs> yeah, so so I, yeah. I think in that sense is that right? I mean, we have to start with the awareness of that. Yes. That mm-hmm. they are coming from that, and in Gojek is not acceptable. Mm-hmm. That you have to. Mm-hmm. Yes. But you know what? 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 More evolved men can yes. do yes. they can call it out exactly that's the Meaning, most powerful i, I feel exactly. like that's that's something that could have even greater impact when your male colleague says yes. hold on a second can we just hear yes. her out yeah. and, and well, what she yeah. she has to or just say like, isn't that what she just said yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah. I, I thought that's yeah. just what, yes. what she said right yeah. so it could it, like yes uh the the, the it, it's great to actually call it out individually mm-hmm. but there are moments whereby you know some some of some women employees may not want to be that person who s- draws the first yeah. blood every yeah. time yeah. and then be yeah. seen as oh Aggressive. she's always the yeah. one who makes this into a gender because issue yes. which it might happen it, it might yes. that might happen yes. very quickly so th- there is also an onus on the other guys in the room who does notice yeah. that and who doesn't feel the same way yeah. and doesn't d- be dismissive to call mm-hmm. it out and exactly. i feel like that could have double the yes. impact, right? More. Yeah. T- because it'll it'll wake up the guy who's not doing it. Sponsorship. There you go. <laughs> Is that what it's have, called? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we need to sponsorship by male. More <laughs> evolved. <laughs> more evolved. More evolved males. But yeah. let's talk from a macro angle now. Let's talk from a company wide angle. I mean, we are the leaders mm-hmm. of this organization. We have a mandate to make um, the company perform the best as possible, and we've decided that. You know, eliminating some of these discrepancies could have a very positive impact on our performance yes. because of the mechanism we described yes. before. So, as a process or as an organization, what do you think are some of the things that we can do? A perfect example was, for example, anonymization of CVs, a small thing but mm-hmm. potentially large impact. Yeah. Is there other things? What's the scope of responsibility for the organization? Right, we as a leadership team, what what are the things that we should be doing to kind of tackle these issues or mitigate at least mitigate the bad effects mm-hmm. of this issue? I think we should need to continue to create a safe space for people to call things out mm-hmm. and be more mindful with groups or teams or people that don't have that safe space. Mm. Right. So, for example, maybe the three of us we can call each other out and feel safe about it, mm-hmm. but you know you can think about going to a different groups like oh I don't feel comfortable yeah. in this group you mm. know I'd rather be passive in this group because right. I don't feel like it's going nowhere right how can create a safe space and the second part of it is like you said call it out right mm-hmm. can we have a system in a way you know in terms of values or word or verb where you see things happen you just call it out but those are like in those are expected behaviors mm-hmm. what are the systems in place or the policies in place that could encourage that behavior to actually come out well as much as I don't really believe in policies, <laughs> wow, that's coming from people. <laughs> that's coming from people I know, right? Radical. Really right. Radical. I know, right? So I think in terms of code of conduct and everything, we make it extremely clear, right? Like no discrimination. It's male, female. It doesn't really matter. Mm. But then in terms of system, I I think with the CVs in the system. We need to do provide more data, even in terms of the gender. Mm. For example, in terms of leadership, is there a different? Mm. Is there a, the difference between the female leaders and the male leaders? Mm. Because I believe we can learn from different genders. Because I think even though there's a gender issue, we can still learn a lot from each other, despite gender being a bad so thing. You, so you're more pro be. showing the discrepancies, the statistical discrepancies, so that each of the departments or the the organization kind of wakes up to the fact that Absolutely. the gap is this big, right? Absolutely. It's kind of like showing a department, 
I'm not going to tell you how much you can spend on uh, travel or entertainment expenses. I'm just going to show you what you spend versus others. <laughs> And right. then get them to change that behavior. Right. That's that's proven to be quite effective, right? Yep. Yep. In McKinsey, yep. they used to show the employee engagement yes. and yeah. compare it per project, per, per project yes. versus yeah. other teams. Yes. And so when your team is really down and demotivated, that team is like, okay, immediately they they take them out to dinner and say, mm -hmm. hey guys, what can we do to be better? Yes. <laughs> right? And it comes back. Right. So instead of creating policies, we mm -hmm. could just share some discrepancies yeah. whereby you got to really pick it up, man. Yeah. Your, um, your department really needs to step up. Yeah. Another one I think will be interesting, right? I think this is, um, I think hiring recruitment is the front funnel of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but then once, if we're coming back to 50-50 at the beginning and it keep dwindling down as, as it goes up, right? right. Mm -hmm. So I think another way that we can do about it is can be a bit more systematic. I'm just thinking out loud about it is, in a team when there is a mixed pack of female and male, mm -hmm. we sometimes have to look at it. For example, in my team, right, when I say, like, okay, this person has a male and female team, right. mm -hmm. how they split the work among them? Mm. Has they given equal opportunity for, the male for everyone yeah. to shine? To shine. Interesting. Right? I mean, in that sense, I think, I think all of us as a leader, I mean, like, in whichever level you mm -hmm. are, you have to continue us, again, not about gender, but make sure that everyone has the equal opportunity yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. to shine, yeah. right? the, the, the grow, yeah. right? right? Because sometimes there's that favoritism that's going on. Unintentionally, mm -hmm. most of mm -hmm. the time actually, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're more comfortable. Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, to your question, like, why male likes that? Because like they're more comfortable. More male. Yeah. male are more comfortable with males. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Is that always true? Is that true? Why is that? You have to answer that question, Dim. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's like asking women. Yeah, I can, we can. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I. Well, I don't grew up with powerful women. So <laughs> yes, yeah, true. I don't, I don't understand how that works in a professional setting. Yes. but I do see that very strongly in a social setting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Yes. When a bunch of uh, married couples come mm -hmm. and meet, and they're all friends, and it's like yeah, they're splitting up. The natural yeah. inclination is yep. now to split up. So yeah. that's a that's a proxy for comfort, yes. yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Call it biological yeah. comfort. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what it is, uh, but but that definitely happens. Uh, I don't yes. see yes. necessarily the same on on the professional side. But I guess the same mechanisms might because might we be are working. social beings, right? We yeah. can't differentiate whether it's professional or personal. That's anyway, right. right? Very right. simple. Sorry, mm -hmm. Gojek is a very social setting. If you yes. think about yeah. it, we go out a lot with each other. Yes. And stuff, mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Yeah. I think and we we are co we're constantly seeing each other outside of work. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And meeting up as friends. The overlap between friends and yes. and professionals. Yes. Is That's very big. where yeah. the female yes. male. Differences yes. come even with mm. meetings, right? Even with meetings, like fifty percent of, of the meetings done are very informally. informally. Yes, right. right, right. So that's why you're just comfortable. I guess naturally, human beings were more comfortable with people who are similar to us. Mm. Yep. And by, well, that's also another important rationale for why some form of balancing of the numbers is very important. Because yeah. if if there's only one, I mean, you, you've been <laughs> you've been like a single. Uh, for the longest female thing. in that in that yeah. leadership team for such a long time, especially in the in the food team, it's getting better now. But yes. uh, if that is the case, then the sense of psychological safety mm -hmm. for whatever minority it is, whether it be female mm -hmm. or it could be ethnic minority or anything else, mm -hmm. is a real sign of concern because it's a it's a ticking it's a ticking bomb of mm -hmm. discomfort yeah. mm -hmm. and stress yeah. yes. if you don't feel one hundred percent comfortable yeah. being in that environment. And so I think. That's another reason why the number discrepancies might also be important, yeah. despite us Fair. having issues yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. ethically with yeah. performance-based, mm -hmm. agnostic, yeah. and all this other stuff. Yeah. Because at, at the end of the day, and this is something that I that I, I fundamentally believe I raised this in, a, in one of our first podcasts, is that psychological safety is 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 a minimum is. viable mm -hmm. requirement yes. for a performer. Yes. You can't. You can't have that. Yes, there. There. The best performers I know are also. They are already intrinsically insecure. Yeah. Okay. Most performers, I can tell, and I, I would like to challenge who, out of anyone of us who is performing in the organization, to say that we don't have intrinsic insecurity mm -hmm. because we're constantly shooting to be better, better, better. Yes, yeah. but that is different. Pushing yourself to be better all the time is very different from coming to work and being in a sense of psychological discomfort yeah. and lack yeah. of safety. Yeah. Because. There is no learning to be had when right. you're yeah. frightened, yes. yeah. Uh, yeah. 
discomfort, yep. stressed out. Yep. There's really no learning yep. that can happen. Yep. And I think that's one of the most compelling arguments for this, for this gender yep. Yep. Uh, uh, yep. Uh, number equalization, yeah. right? Yeah, and I th- I'd like to also be mindful that even though, yes, I agree there's gender issue, but not everything is a gender issue. I agree. Right? This is totally part of it agree. could be gender, part of it could be personality, or something else. So that's right? a really interesting point. How do you balance the amount of discourse in an organization with which to because you have to talk about it mm-hmm. and you have to kind of pump prime the issue a little bit yes right in order for things to when be is that realized balance right but yeah. where is the balance where mm-hmm. that starts taking over and creating a sense of maybe overly pc-ness mm-hmm. yes maybe like a l- discomfort mm-hmm. on on both yep. sides yep. of the yep. of the gender equation where where do you think that balance is where it becomes uh, it's no longer constructive is there such a thing? It's very tough, right? I, I think as much as you are saying to call it out, it works both ways. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I mean, we should call out when they say, "Come on, you just being too sensitive about that." Yeah. Right. And, and right. I think the honesty is upon when I mention like, "Oh, guys like to gather." The same thing, female likes to gather as well. Yeah. So for me, it's a two-way street in everything mm-hmm. like this, right? I think again, coming back, it's the culture of able to stand up mm-hmm. and then like call things out yeah right, right? for yeah. yourself and for each other and actually more yeah. evolved people and not more just more <laughs> evolved male agree because right? we I don't agree. want it to be gender yes yes, right? yes, like yes more yes. evolved people yes. yeah mm-hmm. totally agree yeah so, so we should have a hashtag for that evolved. <laughs> more evolved people <laughs> oh god <laughs> i don't want to know what the comments are going to be on this so. <laughs> we're gonna have that uh-huh. A, a male counter revolution <laughs> on this. <laughs> no, but I think, you know, I kind of wanted to just shift gear at, at the and ask like one final point. And if 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 you were speaking to a say a college grad mm-hmm. who is just jumping into mm. the workplace right now and they are high performing yep. and they have high ambitions, uh, high ambitions, and they really want to make a difference in tech or outside of tech. Yep. What advice would you give them? Is this a female person? Female. It'd be a female. Would it be the exact same advice as a male, or would you give them different advice? I always advise the same. Mm. For me, the advice when people ask, especially if it's college graduate, right? Mm-hmm. Don't take yourself too seriously. Mm-hmm. That's always. Mm-hmm. What I mean, people ask me, right? It's like, oh, what do you think? Should I join or not? Should I go here or there? Mm-hmm. Something like that. Just don't take yourself too seriously. Mm-hmm. Most things in life, what's the worst that can happen? Mm-hmm. Don't kill anyone, right? Yeah. But, but I mean, like, in most things in life, yeah. what is the worst that can happen? You're yeah. so young. Yeah. Give it a try. Mm-hmm. Take a chance on yourself, yeah. right? And then t- and laugh at yourself. Yeah. There's nothing like being able to laugh at yourself is the most important thing, yeah. I think. Yeah. So uh, I think my advice is like, if you are curious about anything, yeah, don't take it seriously. Yeah. Try it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, and and see where you go. So, I mean, it, it, yeah. if nothing else, you learn whether it's for you or not. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have two answers. One, if it's like for for generalists right and I would say try to turn anything into anything to something that's enjoyable mm. right because you can have a really minuscule boring job you can turn it into something powerful and, and enjoyable True. and I think that's a great skill to have because you're not gonna have a job that's gonna be 100% mm. you know amazing, fun right? yeah. <laughs> but then if you can make anything fun and productive and impactful you know that element of play and passion and purpose you're set Yes. But then for females, I guess, I think my biggest criticism for females, even for myself, is learning is that to really be comfortable with who you are. Mm. And I think it's because we are really harder on ourselves. True. Right? And I think for women, just like really learn to know who you are, what your strength, be comfortable. So, whatever situation you need, don't take it personally. Mm. Mm. You know, the outside world is the outside world. But if your core is strong enough, it doesn't matter where you are. That's why Catherine can be, you know, the only female. Not the only. Let's <laughs> change. Right? Because, because you know, because you're strong enough internally. And I think 
and what's lacking and I don't know where you can get that right I think we're lucky because maybe yes. we have good conditioning we have good role models yes. so you know it's easier for us to actually achieve that path but for a lot of women out there I know it's a struggle and what advice would you specifically give to women who are considered who are in the midst of a very successful career in Indonesia for example in this context who are considering having a, a kid what are mm. some of the things that you've um, realize don't think too much. <laughs> <laughs> don't, yes, don't think too much. <laughs> don't you think know? too much. You <laughs> know, just do it. You know, because I think even especially female in my age, they're still thinking I should have a kid, not a kid, not a kid. For me, for me, I didn't even have to decide. It just kind of happened. So thank God, right? <laughs> so, but then for a lot of people, just don't think about it. Life is life. Life yeah. happens. You'll find beauty in whatever it is. So sure. you know, it's not a cost benefit <laughs> problem solving. <laughs> <laughs> ROI. <laughs> <laughs> it's life. You can't, you know, use that framework. Yeah. So I think, from my side, you know, I, I, I think that this topic is 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 extremely important because it doesn't get discussed in a way open enough for mm -hmm. it to be mm -hmm. a productive True. and comfortable conversation. Mm -hmm. And you know, what I would encourage some early startups to do is have these conversations early yes. in the beginning and understand that fundamentally the differences between women and men that almost never get discussed openly because of this whole PC culture yeah. now mm -hmm. is actually what makes having the number of genders uh, balance so powerful for your company mm -hmm. and for the performance, especially if you are a consumer focused, uh, 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 product focused uh, organization. Um, that the differences between those two genders enrich yep. the understanding and the empathy to your user base like nothing yeah. else can. Mm -hmm. And I would actually use the word or the verb instead of a gender balance is gender contribution. Okay. Because we might not achieve the balance, yep. but you have enough contribution. That's right. A good point. Mm -hmm. That's right. Contribution. I like that. Mm -hmm. Guys, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. on the podcast. Thank you. Hope to have you here again. So fun. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Thank Anytime. you. Anytime. Hey, guys. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you liked it, please hit like, subscribe, and follow us on social media. Thanks so much for tuning in.